Before some time, we used to have only one framework in .NET Core for web applications and it was ASP.NET Core, MVC or ASP.NET Core Razor Pages. But now we also have a new framework which is called Blazor. This Blazor is a client-side framework and by using this Blazor framework, you can execute your code on client side without refreshing the page and this was the main problem in mvc what was the problem the problem was for example if you need to calculate some logic on the front end side then there was only one option which was javascript but if you want to write this code in c -sharp, then it was possible only on the server side now let's assume that you have already created some asp.net core mvc application and in that mvc application now you want to use this blazor functionality so first question comes is this possible yes this is totally possible you can use all the blazor components in your asp.net core mvc application and what would be the benefit of using the blazor components in your mvc application it would be you can submit your form by using c -sharp code without refreshing your page or you can also calculate any logic only on the front end side. So let's start this learning and let's understand how can we use the Blazor components in ASP.NET Core MVC application. So for this demo, I'm going to create a new ASP.NET Core MVC application. And for that, I have opened my Visual Studio. If I open the command prompt over here, and in this command prompt, if I write this command .NET version to view the latest version. So here you can see I'm using the .NET 8 Preview 7. This is the latest version of .NET Core at the time of recording this video. So let's close it. And here to create a new application, I can click on this new project. Let's use this MVC template and click on the next button. Here I can give any meaningful name. For example, here I'm writing Blazor integration. And let's click on this next button. So over here, you can see we are having this .NET 8. Let's choose it and configure for HTTPS. Let's not enable the Docker. Do not use top level statements. Let's use them. Click on this create button. So this will create a new blank ASP.NET Core MVC application. If I run this application by clicking on this button, here you can see this application is working fine on the browser. I can click on these pages and I can navigate in between them. Now there is one very important concept to notice. When I will click on these buttons, then you have to focus on this page refresh. Every time I will click on these pages, this entire page will be refreshed like this. See, now in this application, I wanted to enable and use the Blazor components. Let's understand the procedure step by step. So first of all, here in this application, let's just stop it. First of all, we have to enable the concept of Blazor application in this MVC application. So for that, we have to open this program.cs file and we have to add some middlewares. So for example, here we have added this controller with views. In the same way, we have to add the Blazor component over here. So what I can do, I can basically write it again and over here here i'm writing add server side blazor if i'm using this server side blazor then i also have to map the signaler because this server side blazor works with the signaler so over here i can map the blazor hub now we have enabled the concept of blazor in this application and to work with the blazor components we have to make a couple of more changes so first change would be if i expand this views folder and go to this shared and then this layout.cshtml over here, I have to use the Blazor server JS. How can I use that? So I have added these two lines and this is referring the Blazor server JS and this is the base path. I have also created one brand new application by using the Blazor framework, not the MVC, only the Blazor framework. And this is how it looks like. Over here, you can see we are having this imports.razor file and these are the namespaces that are used by other Razor pages. So in the same way, I can also create one imports.razor file in my application and I can basically use all these namespaces over there. If you do not want to use all of them over here in this imports razor, then you have to use them individually on your Razor pages. So let's just create one new file over here. So add and just use this new item. And here I'm writing imports dot razor and from this file i'm gonna just copy this entire code and over here let's paste all of them you can also copy all these namespaces from the description of this video and over here you can notice that there are some packages that may not be required for example if i'm using this system.net.http if you are not using the http client then there is no need of using this one similarly if you do not want to use this authorization and authentications then you can also remove them and we are using the routing from asp.net core mvc so this routing is also not required but this is for the demo let's keep everything over here all our basic changes are done 
now we have to create the components and we have to use them in our pages to create the component you can create any folder anywhere in this application based on your need and you can define all of them over there so for example here i'm creating a new folder with the name components and in this components i'm gonna copy some code from this blazor application if you want to have a look on this application then i can run it also so here it is .NET run hit the enter button and it is working on this port 5259 let's run it and here you can see this is the blazor application so this is the first component that i'm having and if you will click on this button then you will notice there is no page refresh so i want to achieve the same functionality in the asp.net core mec application you can write your code manually but here for the demo purpose i will copy this entire code from this blazor application so we are having these pages and here you can notice we are having this counter to tracer let's create a new component in our mec application so here inside this component folder let's right click and create this razor component okay and let's copy this entire code from this place and let's just paste it like this we don't need this routing and this paste title over here so let's just simply remove them save all the changes we have created the component but we have not used it inside any page so let's use it inside a page we can use it in any page of your asp.net core mec application here let's use it inside the index.html so on this home page we are having this index.cshtml and over here i want to use it but before that let's run this application here you can notice this is the mec application and to render a component in your page you have to use one method from html which is render component async and in this render component async you have to provide the name of your component the name of my component is this counter and to import this counter we have to use a namespace over here we can write it over here let's use it using and here i'm writing the blazor component you can also define this namespace in your view imports.cshtml and here we also have to provide the render mode the render mode is going to be server in this case and because this is an async method so let's use the await keyword so save all the changes and click on this hot reload button go back to the browser and let's just refresh this page immediately you can notice here on this page you are having this counter component and if i click on this click me button then you can notice we are having the counter incremented by one and this entire code is coming from this component so if i go again back to this counter razor here you can notice we are having this basically one p tag and in this p tag i'm using this simple property which is current count and on click of this button click me i am calling this method which is increment count and here i'm increasing the value by one so this is the basic functionality now in the second functionality if i go back over here and click on this fetch data then you can notice we are fetching some data let's do the same thing in our esp.net core mvc application also in the blazor application this is the code that they are using to fetch the data and here you can notice that they are using this forecast service this is the new template of blazor if you are using the older template of this blazor then you will notice that they are using the api to fetch the data from this www root folder and there is a json file of all these details but now they have updated this code little bit so let's use the latest one so what is the change they are having this new class which is weather forecast service so and it is placed inside this data folder so let's create a new data folder here also let's just stop it and here i'm going to create a new folder with name data and inside this data folder i'm going to create a new class so over here click on this class let's just paste the name over here like this and from here i can copy this entire code go back to this mvc application and paste it over here right we also need this class which is weather forecast from over here let's just copy this class as well and let's put this class in the same file like this now if i go back to this fetch data then you can notice they are injecting this service if they are injecting it it means they have also defined it in the program.cs file so if i go back over here then you can notice we are having this line which is builder.service.add singleton and they are using this service over here as a singleton so let's copy this entire line and go back over here and inside our program.cs file so basically i can write this same now we have to work 
on the components as well and to work on the components let's get a new file so over here let's get a new razor component fetch data click on this add button and let's get this entire code from here in your real application you will have to write this entire code by yourself but because here we are doing everything for the demo purpose so just to save the time i'm getting this code from the default blazor application but there is nothing complex in this code you can understand it completely so what they are doing basically now we are using this service and let's just remove this page title because it is not required so this is just the title this is the p tag and if the value is null then we have to display this loading otherwise we will display the data over here and what they are doing over here basically they are just getting the data okay now let's just render this component on our index.cshtml so this is the index.cshtml and let's just write this line one more time and here this time i'm gonna use this fetch data perfect let's just save all the changes and run this application we are getting the error so it means we have to use one namespace also over here so how can we do that let's use the namespace at the rate now we are using this namespace and you can see the error is gone let's run this application again and over here you can notice that we are having two components at this same pace we are having this first component and we are also having the second component which we are using to get the data now let's talk about our third component the third component is going to be submit a form and for that let's get one more component over here so here i'm going to use this add razor component and we can give any meaningful name over here so let's assume it is form example and in this form example i have written this basic code let's understand what is there so this is the html part and this is the csr code so what we are having here we are having this model class and we are using only one single property it has two validations first is the required and second is the string length okay now we are using this edit form component here from the blazor and we are using this edit context where is the context it is coming from this particular place and we are initializing it under this own initialize method on click of this on submit method we will get our values over here and here i'm gonna put a breakpoint basically to view all the values and to use this component on our page again we have to render it so if i go back to this index.cs html and just write one more line and here i'm writing this form example save all the changes and just use this hot reload this time over here you can notice that we are having this form this is the input box and this is the submit button this input box is coming from this place so here we have used this input text and to display the error messages we are using these tags over here let's click on this submit button immediately you can notice without refreshing the page we are having the validation error over here right if i'm entering something over here and click on the submit button you can notice we are getting one more error which is saying name is too long and this was our second validation if let's enter the proper name so i'm entering my name over here and click on the submit button you can notice we are getting the debugger over here and to view the data here i'm using this edit context dot model and let's see what we have in this data here you can notice we are having name and the value of this name is nitis now you can do whatever you want with this value click on this continue button and there we go now let's assume if you want to add one more property over here so and here let's use this name and this time i will use this email email address and let's just remove this enter a valid email save all the changes let's use this hot reload button and over here this time you can notice we are having two fields this is for the name and this is for the email if i click on the submit button then by default you can see we are getting two error messages this is for the name and this is for the email let's enter the name over here click on the submit button you can notice now we are getting the validation message only for this email so let's enter this email also enter a valid email so it means all the validations are working fine let's enter a valid email so i'm writing a dummy email over here click on the submit button and you can notice we are getting the data over here we are getting both the values from this form click on this continue button and let's improve the design a little bit so so on this index page let's just remove all these things and here i'm going to use one more div let's update the design of this form also so in this form example here i can use some div 
and let's use the bootstrap class over here so i'm going to use bootstrap dflex flex column just save all the changes use this hot reload button this time you can notice we are having all the form to provide the gap we can use another class which is d table let's use the gap too and this time you can notice we are having our proper form at this particular place to define the form message as well we can use another h1 tag and here i'm writing form example now you can notice we are having all the concepts under one single page so here we are having three components if i click on this counter then you can see everything is working fine if i click on the submit you can notice we are getting the error messages and we are also getting the data and displaying it over here and everything is happening only by using the blazor components that is all in this video feel free to ask your questions or queries in the comment section below and if the video was useful please like it and share it among your friends thank you for watching have a great day